Hello, and welcome to Churchy Chats with a Church Girl. If this is your first time here, my name is Alicia Wyler. I am um, the owner and creator of A Church Girl, which is a lifestyle brand and a clothing line that seeks to inspire and uplift everyone we have the privilege and opportunity of connecting with. I am so excited, as usual, um, about our show tonight. But this one is a little bit different because we have a very specific topic. And we're, I'm going to tell y'all in a minute uh, what we're talking about. But let me just tell you, I need you to share this broadcast. I need you to share with your family, friends, everybody. And you are not going to want to miss this. So I am expecting you all to join the conversation. It's going to be a great, great show. So I have two amazing lady, ladies with me tonight. I have Miss Courtney, who is her second time here. Um, and I also have Dr. Andrea. So I'm going to let them both introduce themselves, and then we're going to get right into the topics for the evening. Hey, Cora, welcome back. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be back again, so I'm not a newbie anymore. Um, <laughs> my name is Courtney. Uh, I am the owner of Barat Naturals, which is a CBD and hemp lifestyle and self-care brand. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about me today because that's the topic that we're on. And so, yeah. <laughs> Yes, thank you for coming back. And I am um, super excited that you um, actually, I don't want to say started your business. I am excited that you started your business, <laughs> but I am extra excited because it kind of gave me um, a kind of platform to discuss something that I think needs to be discussed. So I am so happy for you and excited for you. Thank and you. thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Dr. Andrea. Hey everyone, so glad to be here. Thank you first and foremost, Alicia. I am the newbie here. <laughs> so glad to have you. It is okay. Um, my name is um, Andrea Hart. I am a EDD, which is like, like a PhD type doctor. So, um, but I am here, I'm so happy to be here. I'm an author, speaker, really a health and healing advocate and a business um, strategist. Um, mainly on my platforms, what I do is I teach and train people to build their faith for divine health and healing on that, the health and healing side. And then on the um, business side, I train individuals, spirit-filled entrepreneurs um, in the area and building and having a community through the Kingdom Business Leadership Network, which I founded, um, teaching and training them, new and emerging entrepreneurs and how to build their business and their platform in and for God in a prophetic apostolic type um, uh, community, teaching them to hear the voice of God and walk in their spiritual gifts. Um, I guess I love this conversation. My background is health and health care, owned a health uh, care company for a little bit with home health. And then um, my professional background is in uh, public health and okay. things. So this is very, and then I'm a licensed minister as well. Um, so oh. these things um, I think need to be discussed and need to be talked about. We need to have some really good conversation and revelation in and around these issues. So, so glad to be here. I am so glad to have you. I cannot tell you how happy I am to have you tonight. And ladies, we're just going to jump right on into the um, conversation. So I've been saying this on social media, dropping little hints here and there. So um let's just get into it so cbd and hemp products for christians <laughs> i know that there is a lot of misinformation about it i'm not suggesting that you should feel one way or the other i just think we should be informed and i also think that we shouldn't um have unnecessary judgments right like just because we hear something and we may think it's something else or it because it's related to something else we may you know condemn it when that may not be um what we should be doing so i wanted to have this conversation um so first we're going to just have a conversation about good old medicinal marijuana okay um <laughs> so <laughs> and i want the people in the comments please um give us your thoughts share your thoughts but ladies what are your thoughts 
on just a traditional marijuana plant for medicinal uses for Christians. What What are your thoughts on that? What do you well, want to go first? <laughs> uh, I can go first. <laughs> Uh, for me, uh, prior to even getting into this space, um, I had never really considered it, uh, never promoted it or even thought about it, to be honest. Uh, now that I, I kind of got more information, so of course I'm going to be okay with it now. But previously, mm -hmm. I just thought nothing of it. I, You know, if I, if I heard someone speak about it or, you know, they say that they were using it for whatever reason, and that was very few people. Uh, it still had that stigma attached to it, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I I didn't care one way or the other. I wasn't turned off, but I wasn't like, okay, do it. You know, like, I think this would be a great option. Uh, being a nurse for 11 years, I never uh, suggested it. If that's the case, I, 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 I literally was ignorant about it until mm -hmm. now. So um, I think if you would have asked me this maybe a couple of years ago, I'd have been like, if it works. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. And I, and I guess I have to kind of agree with you. But I will say this. Whenever somebody made mention of medicinal um, marijuana, I would do one of these numbers, right? Like, okay, <laughs> it's medicinal. You know what I mean? So I think there was even though i wasn't really truly judging judging but i think it was a little bit of okay that's your excuse right. and um you know what i'm saying so so but now i i thought about it a little more and i do feel a little differently about that and i'll share that in a moment um but dr andrea how do you feel about just like i said plain old medicinal marijuana like that somebody would smoke <laughs> yeah i think the 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 big thing is you need knowledge and information kind of like what courtney was saying um because there's so many different reasons why doctors prescriptions and all you know all these different things that we have that we can actually look at there's one knowledge and information and then two you have to follow your own convictions you know if you doing medicinal, medicinal marijuana is convicting you in your heart. You might need right. to listen to that, you know, right. and then that goes back into, are we listening? Are we discerning? Are we hearing the voice of God for ourselves? So that's, you know, step one. And if God, you feel, and you have peace with it and you feel okay about it, you need to go with God because, um, you know, I believe healing comes in different ways and different methodologies. Um, and nobody knows your particular situations. The Bible says that God knows our frame. You know, he knows everything about us. And if this is something that God and you are OK with, who am I <laughs> to tell you Absolutely. to not not do something you have a conviction of? Now, the other side of that is that if that's not the case, you just doing it because, you know, whatever type of carnal or just extra type of reasons then we have another conversation sure. you know, to talk sure. about. So I, I think it's very individualistic. It really de depends on the purpose person, but I don't think that we, that's not what we need to be judging people, you know, people on at the end of the day, is it going to send them to hell? I don't have biblical, <laughs> you know, I guess somebody could might maybe about can use the Bible to say it will, but I think there's greater things that we can, you know, focus mm -hmm. in on. And if it's helping you, and you're under doctor's care, I can't really say I'm a thousand percent, you know, against it. And here's my thing. Um, I think where I changed in my thoughts of it was, you know, a lot of people say that it's an issue because it alters, you know, your, your state of mind, your state of being, but does not all medication alter your state of being? You know, that's why we take it. And, and some of us, take medication long after um, we technically need it. Let's say, you know, you have a surgery and you get pain pills and you like that they make you sleep well, or even that little high, let's admit, let's be honest. There's a little high that comes with medication. Um, it doesn't just knock the pain out or it doesn't just knock you straight to sleep, right? But we seem to be a little less um, judgy 
or a little <laughs> less, um, you know, when it comes to the abuse of that. And I don't, I mean, opioids is now something different. But if we, if we take a step back before the opioid crisis, which it was always an opioid crisis, but we won't get into that. If we take a step back, um, we wouldn't judge people for taking a volume. We wouldn't judge people for taking, you know, some medication that they need. And even if they were abusing it, we wouldn't so much judge them that much on that. But if it's marijuana, then we're judging you for taking it in the first place. And we're judging you if you're overusing it. But I think there are so many things that we need to look at and we need to consider when it comes to um, how we take care of ourselves right the things that we decide right. to use the things that we decide to put into our bodies to help us because if you know we all watch the commercials that you know those medication commercials and i sometimes think if i had or if i do have any of the the issues that these things claim to correct the um the effects of it Right, mm -hmm. you're going right. I'm suicidal <laughs> thoughts. You gonna kill me. I'm gonna have right. diarrhea. I'm gonna be. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I would rather just stick with the <laughs> disease or whatever I have because these side effects are deadly. And right. I don't think we always consider that. I think the word, the key word that you said was abuse. Mm -hmm. So anytime you abuse something, um, in and in the way I study Christianity, I believe in generational iniquity or curses and things mm -hmm. like that. So if there's a pattern of a generational curse is a pattern of sin. Um, mm -hmm. If there's a pattern of sin for addiction in your family line, that's something that you need to think through or in your bloodline. Mm -hmm. That's something that you need to think through before you engage in certain things, whether it be marijuana, alcohol or anything that you might have a greater propensity unless you've prayed through these things and, you know, other things that you can do to get addicted to certain things. So you need to look at that as well when you're looking at not just mar mar marijuana, but anything, mm -hmm, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, this, this churchy chats, but sex, anything that Absolutely. can be addictive, yeah. if it's gonna cause you to stumble and sin, you need to, you know, you need to pay attention to that. Now, one thing we didn't mention was, um, and this is a controversial thing too, if you're doing something that will cause your brother to stumble. Mm -hmm that mm -hmm. part because <laughs> yeah. people will throw that in your face too and there's it, it, that's real that's real yeah, too it is and here's the thing about that if you're truly doing it for medicinal purpose then does people really do people really need to know that it's happening there i mean you know go. what i mean like do people know do people know that you're taking this you know, you got your full little Monday through Friday, Monday through sa Sunday, whatever thing full of pills. And we don't go around telling people that we're taking that, right? Right. Um, so I just think it's a two-edged sword, right? Because I feel like people would not be judgy if, if I said, oh, you know, I had surgery. And I'm taking these Percocets. Okay. But if I say I had surgery and the doctor prescribed marijuana <laughs> for me to get back, I should not, if that is truly what it is, right? Should I be, I don't know. I, I guess I, I have to think that thing through. comes from, I did a um, webinar type thing about the criminalization of cannabis and mm -hmm. how prior to uh what it was 1850 cannabis was a part of the pharmacopoeia it was uh widely um prescribed to people and mm -hmm. then when the criminalization of cannabis came about the demonization of cannabis came about yeah um, oh, that's the whole that's, word right there <laughs> yes. and that's where the turn even as far as legally the uh re the representatives and all that that um uh, voted on the criminalization of cannabis did mm -hmm. not know it was cannabis because they um used the term marijuana and it was deeply gotcha. rooted in racism and it's a whole like it's the whole it's thing a whole big deal right yeah. like if you look at that video it goes in and it's a lot of you know politics behind it and so uh a lot of people didn't even know that it was the exact same plant 
the mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. canvas plant that they were using for him to make clothing and textiles and plastics and all these things that hemp allows you to do um yeah. they didn't even know that that's what they were voting on and so uh like i said it became criminalized and a stigma came upon it and if you guys get a chance for the listeners or whoever um check out this uh and you may be able to find it i was able to find articles it's called reefer madness it was a film that came out it's like a short film that came out in like 1930 mm -hmm. when there was a lot of um publications kind of you know going against cannabis at the time aka marijuana and that film said to people that um if you take marijuana that you will start having like sex orgies and all these different things and it was called oh the devil's go uh plants from the devil's garden like no. i wish i could have uh gave you guys something this and if you go on my page i'll post it when i we get off yeah post it uh, and, it, and that was the turn of it and so of course that stigma stayed alone because if i smoke weed uh or marijuana um i'm going to sin and it was like um it, it stated something to the effect of it causes women white women to want to have sex with black men and uh latino okay. men and so that wow. was the big push <laughs> behind it and that's kind of how everything turned from to turn. about 1930 until the uh marijuana tax act was passed in 1950 so they had yeah. they it was a lot and there are so many things and so many conversations we could have surrounding so many different things that um happened that mm -hmm. changed the way that things were viewed because of black people or it was it was made to be a weapon against black right. people right so I, i'm not suggesting that it's okay to do drugs or it's okay to smoke weed or right. whatever i'm just saying there are a lot of things that the narrative was turned on it's it's bad because first of all it makes you have sex with black. like what that doesn't even <laughs> no, make, make sense. Good comments. Right. That makes no <laughs> sense. Like, but those are the things so that become planted. It was like I couldn't believe people actually believe that. But if it's constantly like everything yes. else, constantly played in our face and in our ear, and over and over and over after some point, uh, and that's why education is always that should always be at the forefront. Absolutely. because you educate yourself and you make an informed decision uh most people get their information now social media or big mistake the TV. <laughs> so you know it's media and that's they mm -hmm. made sure to saturate the media uh with those type of pub publications that kind of turn people against and like i said a lot of people didn't know that it was cannabis that they were talking about uh, because prior to that, prior to the 1930s, they weren't using cannabis recreationally. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. they didn't know this was a thing that they were using medicinally all this time sure. that they were talking about. Yeah. And I think um, you, you hit it on the head, you know, with us just being misinformed, us being ignorant mm -hmm. of um, things. And we, sometimes I'm not going to judge people too heavily. Now, I, I'm I'm not going to just um, give you a pass right. on certain things, but I do understand that sometimes ideas are planted in our minds and we don't even really realize, right? right? And that's part of the, um, even the growing up process, this is a little off topic, but, um, you know, sometimes we get a little older and we realize okay, well, I don't agree with this. Although this is what my family agrees or this is what my parent think is right. Um, it can be hard to say, I don't agree with you, right? So I think some of us accept it and kind of live by it. And others of us may not live by it, but we don't verbally say that we don't agree with it right mm -hmm. so as far as people know this is our stance on it and we just feel uncomfortable with saying i read a book <laughs> or i watched something that gave me information and now i feel differently about it um but we're gonna go we're gonna go to our next topic but i just wanted to start with that because 
I know like myself, a lot of people, when they hear medicinal marijuana, they feel like you're just using it as an excuse. And I just don't think that that's the case for everybody. And people who are against it, um, I really think that should be a personal decision. Mm -hmm. Right. I I don't think that it's something that I can say is wrong for Courtney or wrong for Andrea. I can say it's wrong for me if, as Andrea uh, alluded to earlier, if it convicts me. But Mm -hmm. I want to challenge Christians if taking a volume, you know, convicts you. Right. If, you know, if other things convict you, then don't do it. It doesn't make it right because you feel like, oh, the doctor prescribed this to me. So I have an excuse. If you are um, one that's addicted or can get addiction, like uh, Dr. And- Andrea said, then don't put it on certain things. Right. And kind of graze your own paper right. when it comes to these things. Right. right. We can't right. say what's right for somebody else. So we're going to take a quick commercial break and then we're going to come right back with a little more CBD and hemp specific conversations. Stay tuned. Get fit with Corey. Fit is made fun with real results. Join us. In-person classes are now available. For more information, www.patreon.com forward slash get fit with Corey. Sign up today. Okay, and we're back. So I want to move the conversation a little more to specifically CBD and hemp products. Now, Courtney has a company. She is a Christian that owns CBD and (laughs) hemp um, company. And I thought when I first saw it, I was like, man, this is amazing. And then I started thinking about the things that people must have been thinking. (laughs) And I'm going to be honest. At first, I was like, can I like the pose? (laughs) Like, like, you know, and I know, like, and I don't have an issue with it. But the way other people think can affect you, right? And although you know your convictions and although you know what you're good with and what you're not good with, um, you can sometimes be affected by that. So I guess my question is, when all the CBD stuff first started to hit, you know, the market and you saw even chapsticks, y'all, we were in mm-hmm. Israel and I was like, I need some chapstick. And I was like, I want to buy some from Israel because I'm in Israel. Right. So mm-hmm. it had like hemp, a couple of hemp ones. And one had like the marijuana plant on it. So I was like, I ain't gonna buy this because I ain't got time for the saints <laughs> judging me, right? Girl, get the tape over but, and keep it moving. <laughs> right, but I'm sitting here acting like I'm about to get high from some chapstick when I know that's not the case, right? But there are stigmas connected to it. But before we even really get to the stigma, when you first started to see this stuff hit the shelves, right? What? How did you feel about it? What were your thoughts? Were you willing to purchase it? Were you concerned if somebody saw you purchasing it? Like, how how did you feel? For me, it's crazy. I had no desire whatsoever. I cared less about CBD, hemp. I, you know, of course, I heard the chatter. Everywhere you went, you saw it. I had no, I, 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 that's why I tell people, can't nobody really tell me anything about this because mm-hmm. I had no desire to even be in this space. None whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was divine. They can't change my mind about it. So when I first saw it, I wouldn't have bought it because I literally had no use for it. Right. Cause I, I won't, okay. I won't just buy something just because it's trendy. I'm not that sure. girl. So for me, I, I didn't really pay much attention to it. It wasn't until my cousin was having an issue with her knee and she said, called me and she said, I, I've been having this issue with my knee and I don't know what's going on and it's not swollen, but it just hurts for me to walk on it. And I said, try CBD. And she said, what is CBD? And I was like, I don't even know. <laughs> and I was like, I <laughs> and that literally prompted me to, because I was like, how can I tell somebody to use something and I can't even articulate exactly what it is. 
And from sure. that point, I started researching it to kind of get an idea. And that was like the thing that happened. That kind of spiraled everything into place for me. But I had no intention on purchasing it for myself or even figuring out what it actually uh, consists of. Okay. And I'm we're going to come back to you, Courtney, and talk about <laughs> how you got in the business. But first, um, Dr. Andrea, Andrea, I'm sorry, am I saying your name? You're saying you're fine. It's <laughs> Andrea. You're I, fine. I, I as want, long as you don't say Angela, say we're good. <laughs> oh, listen, I just want to be right. Um, so when you first saw all of this hit, you know, it was everywhere, honestly. Yeah. How yeah, did definitely. it make you feel? Did you um, initially, feel any way about it either way? I initially didn't really pay attention to it. Similar to um, Courtney, I was like, okay, this is just another thing. I was actually looking at the legislation on it and just trying to get an understanding as to why now, why this, how, and I was reading different stories of people that had used um, CBD and marijuana had it, and how it had these medicinal properties and all these things on these heart-wrenching stories and how people were fighting so hard for children and all these things that if they could just get this thing, it would help them out. And so it made me think about it. And then it's funny, I have a story. My husband, we were in a store and there was like some CBD um, lotion. And mm -hmm. uh, it was funny. I was like, I'm not sure about this whole thing. I was like, I want to get it because it smells good. But these church folk, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, and then instantly in that moment or somewhere thereabouts, I thought about it. I was like, I wish a Christian would do this. Um, and I was looking at some of the numbers, that business side of me, looking at the numbers and how all these people that weren't of God were making all this money off of CBD. And I saw the stores popping up and I was like, I wish a Christian could get into this. And me having the health care, I was like, I want to, but I already know. <laughs> That's why when I saw Courtney and some of the things she was doing, I was like, I need to pray for her because the persecution. Yes that would yes. come, whereas she is literally a needle in the haystack. Cause I know yes. if this was something that I needed to do, I can go to somebody that is a Christian and I know they're not gonna do something wrong or give me something that's not what it's supposed to be. And alongside probably give me the word of God <laughs> yes. with it. Okay. So I was like, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, we need, Christians need to, you know, I believe Christians need to be kingdom Christians and be in all sectors of society and make their presence known wherever it is and bring forth the, the power and the presence of God in whatever industry. And this was a booming industry. And I'm like, man, mm -hmm. Christians need to do something because they missing it off of some religious stuff. You know, they need yeah. to see about this. Absolutely. And I think that's a great point. And that's going to lead us into um, some questions for Courtney. Um, you said that this was nothing that you were really interested in. It just kind of happened. So how did you end up <laughs> with Bare so, Naturals? Like, how did you end up here? And what were the first thoughts? <laughs> like, <laughs> Listen, so I, after I said that to my cousin, the next day we go to my friend's house and the, the neighbor next door has something on their car about CBD. And I'm like, okay, wow. you know, I'll, you know, I'm going to look into it anyway. Cause I just saw this girl yesterday to try CBD and I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I get back to Houston and I'm in New Orleans at this time. I get back to Houston and I'm bringing my godson who I'm raising to school. And as I'm gone, every day I drop him off from school, I make the U-turn. There's a big billboard that says something about CBD. And I'm like, why do I keep seeing this thing? And I'm like, oh, I was supposed to check on this, right? And as I'm into it and I'm reading about it and I'm learning and I'm like, oh, wow. And, you know, the, the nerd in me and I'm like, oh, wow. And, oh, and I'm like really researching this thing. And then somebody starts to talk about it on social media. Somebody that I follow, it's a business person. Um, mm -hmm. And they, she's talking about it and she's going to have a class. And I'm like, I got to pray about this because I don't know why this <laughs> is constantly being in my face. I'm like, God, what are you saying to me, right? And so I prayed on it, um, got clearance. I took the class. And after I took the class, I felt as if 
the person that, that I took the class with was more about the vibe, the lifestyle of it, and not the education in a medicinal point part. Okay. It was more or less okay. like, let's take this, not necessarily get high, but the the lifestyle behind it. And my, okay. my aim for it was totally different. And so mm -hmm. I knew I needed to put my head in my book because as a nurse for 11 years, I had never heard of an endocannabinoid system uh, and found out it was only founded or, or discovered in 1990. And I'm like, seriously, we've been having an endocannabinoid system, like a circulatory system or respiratory system. And it wasn't discovered until 1990. So there's so much that we don't know, right? Wow, yeah. What, yeah. Now explain that to me. You know, I'm not a health person. So we have an endocannabinoid system in our bodies, and it's a biological system, just like your, in your circulatory system or your respiratory system. Mm -hmm. And in our body is endocannabinoids. Our body actually produces cannabinoids. CBD okay. and THC are cannabinoids. They are plant yeah. cannabinoids. So when we introduce... Um, and I think one of the reasons why it works so well for people, because we have been neglecting our endocannabinoid system for so long because we didn't know we had it. Wow. So once you take wow. it, it ignites or um, is a catalyst to make those things. And, 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 and back to what I was saying about the endocannabinoid system, it's our master balance system. It causes things to get into balance. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a network of receptors and messengers that kind of say, oh, this is out of order. And if our endocannabinoid system isn't stimulated or working right, we need to add something, a plant cannabinoid to stimulate it to work right. And what it does is okay. bring things into balance. Oh, uh, you have inflammation because uh, that's one of the big properties of cannabinoids. It kind of has uh, anti-inflammatory uh, anti properties. And so there's inflammation in your body. A uh, message goes off. A signal in your body and your body should respond to that to decrease the inflammation or lessen the inf inflammation. But if our endocannabinoid system isn't working or functioning properly, then we stay with the inflammation for longer than we should. But if we're taking our endocannabinoids in a form of CBD in whatever fashion is that, say for instance, the mm -hmm. CBD oil, it stimulates our endocannabinoid system to do what it needs to do. Um, okay. And so that part of that was like, oh, wow, really? So here go me, plant-based, because that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, so there's a plant-based option for all of these issues. And that's why CBD can be used for so many different things. And I think that's another issue, because it's like, what does it really do? People always mm -hmm. ask, so who, what is CBD? And because it can work from things as small as um edema which isn't always small to seizure disorder mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. such a wide range of things because it helps your body stay in balance the the major component of your endocannabinoid system is to put your body maintain homeostasis and, and stay in balance and um so that alone because i have a lot of people in my family in my community that suffer with a lot of health issues and i'm always trying to find a natural solution because even as a nurse, I'm not taking a prescription for nothing. Pretty much me. Okay. You can't okay. get a prescription for that. And I know uh, people like that. Know. I know a lot of yeah. people like, I'm like not I, don't, I don't take medicine for much of anything. If it's not and natural. That's right. uh, and, and so, but I can't tell it to everybody, right? Because everybody right. doesn't operate like this. So now I have a plant-based option for them. I'm like, oh, hold on. Like, we, yeah. like I'm about to get into this. And then... When I started doing my testing and my research and saw the effects that it was having, my mom's 75 years old, she's on dialysis, and, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of health issues that comes along, and I saw my samples work for her. Wow. Like, oh, that's Amen. great. That's like, awesome. there's nothing that, you know, I, and then not only that, and then there was a, a, a moment in time where I was about to post something or say something or announce something, and I kind of like step back and the Holy yeah. Spirit said to me, you, you don't let uh, other people's personal convictions stop you from doing what I called you to do. And after that yeah. day, Amen. that was it. I have not had an issue at all um, with posting, talking about it, educating, 
given my stance on it because I knew I had no intentions. I, I didn't want to be bothered with that at all. Like, but um, this is one of the things that I swiftly obeyed and mm -hmm. it's been amazing. The testimonies themselves, and if any of my people watch it and y'all are one of my customers, y'all better be in the comments and give y'all testimonies. Tell these people I'm not lying. Come but on the through and testify. The testimonies in itself, if I never made a dollar, the girl, listen, the testimonies themselves have been amazing. That alone okay. is okay with me so mm -hmm. i know it's a, a booming business as far as the financial side and how it's on the up but the fact that i have people who literally take their cbd every single day like it's a prescription and i see the effects in their lives i'm like there's nothing nobody can tell me yeah so oh. why or let me not say why let me say when you went to introduce it and and dr andrea you can speak to this too maybe not specifically about h uh about this but when you went to introduce it courtney um did anybody like inbox you like girl what are you doing christian you can't take this <laughs> nobody, <stuff."> never, <laughs> never said, nobody never said anything kind of nobody never said anything to me but i can tell by the response if you look at okay. my Raw Naturals page, I have like 50 something followers. My website says something different. So I know uh -huh. there's a, the still the stick, stigma Big attached. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like they don't buy it. They might not publicly support it. But girl, get your healing. I don't really care about <laughs> you know. <laughs> so yeah, there's people that I know that will not won't like a post won't share um my other things my other businesses they share like and so i know it's still apprehension about it and that's why i try my best to educate as much as possible and mm -hmm. i even have people who've tried it just because they trust my judgment and they trust Absolutely. me um and so they tried it because of, at first it was like girl what is she doing but they never said it to me though <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't have to do it. But that. I know they they like what she now what she didn't got herself into. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Andrea, can you speak to that? No, I think it's um I think it's amazing. Um and I think um even while you were talking, I heard the Holy Spirit say trailblazer and pioneer in referring mm -hmm. to you. So oh, I think Jesus. just with your background. Um, knowing the physiology with nursing and the way you're so bold, I I really believe you know not to get super churchy, but your call <laughs> for such a chat. time, and you know I'm flowing prophetic, so your call for such a time as this when it comes to these things, and you know I teach and train in healing for faith, but even still, I mean I'm very intimately aware of dialysis. My husband was on dialysis for mm. seven years as a 30 year old. And up, you know, so I know what that is. Sometimes people don't know and understand individuals struggle. They don't understand when you're hit with a chronic disease and all these different things and you're looking for relief and you don't want to do all the stuff the doctor's telling you with the, the intense chemo and the drug and all this stuff and to have a natural option and then have a Christian that knows God to tell them that this is okay and it's helped other people and give them the word along with it. You, you can't, you know, you can't, you can't beat that. So I just thank God that there's people out there like you willing to blaze the trail for other individuals and that people would put down this religious mindset in regards to health and healing in this area mm -hmm. and in other areas <laughs> and right. just um, do what they need to do so that they can fulfill the purpose of God on their life. Cause it's hard to do what God telling you to do when you're sick and in pain. That's just the reality of it. And I believe it's the enemy that would put these stigmas cause we're talking about the stigma yeah. and the reality is, is we're at the beginning phases of this. So we need people like Courtney to blaze through and say, this is okay. I'm a medical person. I went to school for this, right. <laughs> you know, and I'm right. telling you, I'm not just, I'm not just, I'm not just talking, this I'm not trying to get your right. money. You know, I'm trying right. to Absolutely. tell you that this is okay. And don't listen to the people in the ways of the world that are trying to, like you said, have that vibe and everything like that, you know, and then bring other people um, that you can teach them and train them how to right. do the same thing that are Christians. And we have just another thing that the, the Lord put in place 
for us to continually use towards our health and healing. But on the other side of that is don't idolize anything. Right. Don't think Absolutely. that God isn't in it. <laughs> like that's right. essential oils, that CB does all of that. Anytime you right. turn to an idol, you are <laughs> you on the wrong side. Yes, absolutely. And I think and one of the reasons ahead, I think please. for me, um, I kind of I feel like God kind of like gave me this assignment because you can't tell me anything about the supernatural power of the healing of God, like nothing. Yeah. So anybody know if they call me about something going on in their body, I know that lady, my mom, supernaturally healed. Yeah, like, and so. And I think that was why, because I, God knew where I was as far as healing is concerned. You can't tell me nothing about God mm -hmm. healing, period. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so yeah. I wouldn't use CBD as the end all be all and idolize it, like you said, because I know the only power that comes, God is the only person, the only way I can get this power. Now he's going to use on. whatever he want to use. But at the end yeah, of the absolutely. day, he's the supreme healer. He's our chief physician. Yeah, and so yeah, for me, yeah. uh, I think that's why I was positioned in such a way because that listen, here I don't play with healing at all. So I know mm -hmm. I've seen it with my yeah. own eyes. And I think that was one of the reasons why I'm that person because mm -hmm. I know I and as much as I talk about you know the things that it is done. It cannot do it apart from God, period. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know? yeah. So I and I'm glad you said that because I know a lot of times we talk about something and oh, it does this and it helps for this, this, that, and the third. After so long, when you gotta watch it because yeah. then you step into idolatry. Yes. And it can happen without us even realizing it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's so many things, that's how we get so many idols in our lives, right. period. Right. And it can be something that God gives us, but we take it and we put it in God's place. Yeah. God has given us so many yeah. things to use Anything and resources, but it can't become God. No. Right. He's the one right. that stays in place and everything else that he's given us are the things that we are able to use and the things that he has provided us with to heal us, to help us, to grow us. And, and it goes on and on and on. Right. We're going to take another quick commercial break. And then I want to talk a little bit about um, how we can, I know that we can't change people's mind about things, but how we can maybe just shed a little light for people who still may feel like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we, maybe we could, and I'm not here to convince anybody. I'm not here right. to convert anybody. I just want to us to be educated, right? And from a Christian perspective. So we'll be right. right back in just a minute. Stay tuned. Um, I kind of want to wrap up with talking about um, how we can educate people on CBD and hemp products, right? So if somebody feels like I, it's all natural, but I don't want to be high, <laughs> can we speak to, because <laughs> some people think that, honestly, yeah, they really do I think that. that. So can we, yeah, right. So can we speak a little bit to um, the fact that it's not the THC levels are not there for you to really get high. I'm not suggesting that there is not at all an altered state of mind or being because that is what happens when we take any kind of medication. But for those people who just believe they are, uh, I don't want to say smoking weed because if it's not smoking, but you know, if they feel like they're doing drugs, how can we <laughs> separate? <laughs> that the criminalization of it, I guess, because we know that we're doing drugs, or I don't want to say doing drugs because doing drugs sounds like something that we do on a regular as a habit. But I know that I'm taking a drug if I take a Tylenol, or if I take a Volume, or if I take a you know, Percocet, or whatever. I know that I'm taking a drug, right? 
I'm not necessarily doing drugs as I'm not abusing it, but how do we um, make it an option for Christians and non-Christians alike without, but specifically Christians without making them feel like it's a sin. And we've kind of already discussed, you have to do and go the way that the Holy Spirit leads right. you. Mm -hmm. But he may be saying, this may be the way, right? Or, or this may be something, but because of our judgments about it, we won't even hear the voice of the Lord that may be leading us in a certain direction. So how do we make it at least an option for, for Christians? So for me, uh, one of the things that I tell people, uh, I have two tinctures, a broad spectrum and a full spectrum. The full spectrum mm -hmm. has 0 0.3 TAC. Um, and the full spectrum has absolutely no TAC at all. So that's always an option for people who want to try uh, CBD without any TAC at all. That's an option. Um, as far as the THC component, in order for it to be legal, it has to be less than 0 0.3%. Um, okay. And you're talking about dry weight. And so uh, in a bottle of 1,000 milligrams, it may yield 3 milligrams of THC. Um, I, yeah, 3 milligrams of THC in my th in a 1,000 milligram uh, CBD bottle. I take full and broad. I feel absolutely nothing unless there's an issue in my body that it's, it takes away or, but like, okay. I've never smoked before. I've, I don't take medication. So Me anytime either. I ingest something, I'm going to feel it. I don't okay. care what it is like that. Anything I take, I'm, it's going to work for me. Right. Because sure, I don't sure. never take anything. Um, the broad spectrum, I mean, the full spectrum, that's the one with the 0 0.3 TAC. I was expecting to feel something. I felt absolutely nothing. Uh, TH, um, CBD gives you like a relaxing effect, mm -hmm. but that's it. Uh, anybody okay. in the comments, um, if you've taken it before, mm -hmm. you can attest to it. Uh, it doesn't make me feel, I don't know what high it feels like, but I'm quite sure this right. isn't what it they doesn't want. alter you. <laughs> Right. So I don't, I don't, I, they can always do, use broad spectrum. That's what I say. That's the option. Uh, as far as hemp and the flower itself, um, you probably, you're not going to get any without any THC because it's the, it's the plant. It has right. some, uh, and it's in order for it to be legal and to be considered hemp, it has to have 0 0.3 as well. Um, okay. My mom registers the hemp. She registers the flower. At 75 years old, she registers the flower because it gives mm -hmm. her energy and it allows her to move around. Her ambulation is so much better with it. Um, okay. So she she prefers that. Surprisingly, she prefers that. I've never tried it because I wouldn't know the first thing to do. Um, but she 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 actually likes that one better. Um, there's topicals. Um, that some people may not want to ingest it. I have a topical salve that you can just put on a particular area and yeah. it works. So I think And that's I need to get some of that. My knee is killing me. <laughs> or a um or a broad spectrum with no C with no TAC at all. That's what I would say. Okay. But I will say this as well. Any company that you uh purchase from, make sure that they provide you with a COA. I say this every time. But it's important because mm -hmm. there's too many, as much as we talk about these places popping up all over, there's not many that are mm -hmm. um, operating in integrity. And they should provide you with a certificate of analysis, which is a third party lab test with every purchase. You may not. Oh, wow. If they give you any type of pushback, I wouldn't purchase for, from them. And I'm just being honest yeah. because people can say this is CBD, but how do you know? Right. How do you know exactly what you're ingesting? And yes. so. And full transparency, every order, I think it's a day after, it's automatically triggered to where a COA comes. Um, probably before you get your package, you'll get your COA that you can bring to your doctors and let them see, this is what I'm taking. Um, this is what it what's inside, you know, and, and just let them know and have that conversation because I don't think no doctor in the world would be against you taking 
uh, CBD. Now, they probably don't want you to take it only, right? Right. Right. They're dealing with Big Pharma, and they don't want you to take that because, like, you, we messing up everything else that they have going on, but that's a whole nother conversation. Yes. Um, but I don't think they will ever go against it. And uh, this is just a little another nugget, I think. If anybody have any issues or still kind of feeling apprehensive, I would suggest that you watch this documentary on um, Netflix called Weed the People, W-E-E-D, the people. And it's a documentary <laughs> about okay, we'll um, children who um, have cancer and they are kids and their parents are trying cannabis as um, altern uh, alternate um, alternative as opposed to uh, uh, chemo. And mm -hmm. to oh, wow. see, I think the stigma is kind of taken away because we're talking about kids. Yeah. And to watch their journey and just watch and see what happens with these kids and their lives. And it's a lot of ups and downs, but it, it's a really big eye opener. And I think you kind of see like some of these kids are like 12 months that's taking oh, wow. it. They're not getting high. You know what right. I'm saying? Oh, right. and, and mind you, they are taking... Um, like one on one, have THC, have CBD, because they're okay. probably in states that it's legal, but the THC is mm -hmm. legal, and so they're taking like large dosages dosages of THC. But it's a really good, a really good documentary uh, on Netflix. I think that uh, uh, anybody that may have any apprehension about mm -hmm. THC, they can watch that and just get some information about it. It's a lot of, of valuable information in that documentary. Thank you for sharing that. And um, Dr. Andrea, do you have anything to share um, or add yeah. to that? Um, well, I appreciate um, Courtney's integrity, one, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> providing this mm -hmm. of authenticity because people don't know what they're getting most of the time when they're in right. the drugstore mm -hmm. and it's some CBD, you know, it's probably nothing but some right. olive oil in there with something <laughs> else. I don't know. Right. But um, when I was thinking, having worked in churches and working, you know, nine to five in a church right now, how could I, I put myself into that, how could I present this as a viable solution or method to help someone in their healing? And I thought about the testimonials, um, mm -hmm. a way if you are a person out there and you know this has worked for you, get the testimonials and um, frame it around, provide the education to the pastor, whoever's in leadership and mm -hmm. frame it around the testimonial um, and have the people that you know know God that aren't right addicts and art all these things and all what the narrative has said but you know have those people come get the testimony and speak on as an educator health educator even how to use this with scripture mm -hmm. and then if it's something because i know being in church people have a certain way about them about certain things tell them to get some accountability because this might yeah, help them absolutely. um their kind of accountability can be a counselor their pastor small group leader whatever it is and really um, have an open heart and an open mind and consider that this could be something that the Lord would like me to take advantage of to use towards as another thing with his word towards as a method of, you know, healing Absolutely. and not feel you know bad about it. I think when people have the support of who they look up to um, as their pastor and things, because, you know, I believe as pastors and different people in the back doing what they need to do <laughs> with they, you know, CBD and all these things, but they don't. Period. Right. They right. don't say anything because they know people, you know, and that's just right. part of being in ministry. And, you know, it's a decision you have to make. But I believe if you can educate people, because most times people don't even know how to get their healing with faith, let alone putting their faith in different, you know, using other that's stuff. Weird. So, you know, it's that part, too. So I think if we provide the education, we have people like Courtney out there that is a bona fide Christian that's bonafide. able to, you're right, that's able to tell them the do's and the don'ts and give them education, be able to speak to the medical side of it and just tell them to have an open mind and an open heart. And, you know, this is, you know, we in a new culture, we out here, Rona, Corona out here, you know, this, this, this is different. <laughs> we are living our lives in a completely, a completely different, different world than even yes. just a ago, right? And in the point of this conversation, I wanted to have this conversation with you two ladies, um, particularly, I don't want anybody to think I'm here to tell you 
take CBD. It's the thing to do. Don't do regular medications. But I did want to have a conversation around what it really looks like, right? Mm -hmm. Why we feel the way we feel about it and have someone from a Christian perspective who owns a Christian company and also um, somebody else, Dr. Andrea, who is um, knowledgeable in the health field and a bunch of other areas that could speak to us um, about maybe looking at things differently right and also giving us other options sometimes all we think we have is what the doctor puts in front of us and we can't look to other means or things because of what we think it is we don't even really know but just because it's hemp or a cbd we feel like it's against our lives or against our laws as a christian or against whatever but i wanted to really just educate us and to help us to realize that um, we have Christians out here that are doing things by the word of God, right? And have your best interest at heart. And whenever there is something, especially relating to healing, as Courtney alluded to earlier, earlier, we know that God is our healer, right? Yes. We know that whatever yes. he decides to use, he can use no medication. He can use whatever he wants to use, but we know that God is our healer. We also know that there are, um, I, I talked about this and I kind of joked about it earlier, but with the medications on television, you know, and all the side effects, that can be, that can be tough. If we can be honest, that can be, detrimental in some cases right so I feel like if we have as much education on other things as we think we may have on what's widely accepted right because how Mm -hmm. often do we ask our doctor no really tell me how -hmm. this is going to affect me really really explain to me in after taking this for five years, what is my liver going to look like, right? And what right. is my kidney going to look like and what's going to happen? And having somebody like Courtney who has a um, background in the medical field is a Christian and is going to be honest with you, yeah. right? Who is going to give you the word and the weapon, right? Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that um, it's so powerful. And mm-hmm. I just wanted to have this conversation because this is something that I think should be options for Christians and we shouldn't feel this, this big stigma and that we have to hide or that we have to be embarrassed or ashamed. Right. Right. So um, ladies, I appreciate you coming on, having this conversation with me. I would love to have Thank both you of so you back. Um, a couple of people in our comments um, said that they use it and they don't feel high right? That they, you know, have had the experience and it's working for them. Um, another lady said that she actually uses it as a facial moisturizer. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm just here to open up our minds, you know, yeah. on, on the topic and just to um, live your life by the convictions of the Holy Spirit. Yes. I can't tell you what yeah. the Holy Ghost, you know, where he's leading you or how he's leading you, but also you don't have to automatically shun things because of what has been planted in our hearts and our minds for years. And we don't even realize why we think that way. So my message for the evening is don't be afraid to challenge even your own thoughts, not just about this, right? But about anything. Sometimes we're afraid to challenge what we've always been known or always been taught. And it might not actually even be our thoughts. It might not actually be our beliefs, but since it was passed down, we feel like this is what I have to believe. No, challenge that. God is the God of all truth, right? Yes. He's going to yes. reveal truth to you and um, reveal what's best for you. So thank you, ladies, for having this conversation with me. And before we leave, I want you to tell people where they can find you, um, social media, um, all of that good stuff, anything that you have going on. Um, coming up, webinars, uh, lives, anything. Just just tell the people how they can find you and how they can follow you. Courtney, where can the people Okay, so you find can you? find me on Instagram at Courtney LaShine. My CBD company is called Bara Naturals, B-A-R-A Naturals. And the word Bara comes from uh, Bara. the Hebrew word for create. Wrong. It's fine. Everybody say 
I forgot Barak, but it's the, <laughs> from the, um, the Hebrew word create, um, to cause to be from nothing. Uh, so yeah, Barai Naturals, BarainNaturals.com, and on the Barai Naturals page on every Thursday, I'm starting um, this series called Wellness Season. And it's not just about wellness in your body, but wellness in every area of your life. So I will have special guests every Thursday at 7 p.m. I think it's 7 p.m. Uh, yeah, and so we just talk about wellness in every area. This week, we're going to talk about traveling well. And so I'm going to have a guest on that is a travel blogger. And so we just talk about uh, all things well in our lives because I believe in wholeness. And so if we can get the little parts together, we can... Be whole, right? So if we, uh, if you guys are interested in wellness in particular areas of your life, you can catch me on Barai Natural's Instagram page on Thursdays, uh, and Courtney Lashine on um, just to see what I'm up to. just to see what she's up to. And let me just, just say that I am to. so proud of you for taking this step and like you said um you doing what the holy spirit led you to do even though you know people feel a certain way about it i know yeah. that god is going to bless you tremendously and Thank i just appreciate so you being so knowledgeable and Amen. your integrity in this I had is, to. yes and i, I appreciate that because, uh i knew education would be a big component um for my community and my people and then um they needed someone that they can trust because mm -hmm. I've seen too many little places hopping up here and there. And I was like, yes, nah, they can't everywhere. be held to certain standards because there's so many places popping up like that. It's not much control because on a federal level, it's, it's legal in all 50 states, but then their state, it's a lot as far as the mm -hmm. legalities are concerned. And then that leads a lot of room for error and a lot of room yeah. for predators. And so if I can stand in a place of integrity and uh, as well as educate, then uh, I'm doing what God has called me to do. So thank y'all so much for the Yes, encouragement. and we appreciate you, Courtney. We appreciate it. the work that God is doing in your life. Yes. Thanks. Dr. Andrea, tell the people where they can find you and what you have going on. Okay, I'll definitely tell them that. Now, I want to give this um, word to Courtney before she where she goes. Um, I don't know if you've ever thought about teaching or training other people in this as Christians, but you might need to look into that. And then also, I heard the word franchising for you. I don't know if that's Jesus. anything that God has spoken to you, but look into that. <laughs> that's all, girl. I'm doing that. But anyway, um, like Alicia said, thank you so much for... Um, having me on um what i do i have two platforms you can look at find me at um on instagram that's probably one of the easiest at dr dr underscore andrea i heart that's where i have my platform around god still heals um uh, that's the title of my book but i have a facebook group and things like that so it's god still heals with dr andrea here on facebook and then um at kingdom business leadership also on instagram if you're want to be a part of a community of spirit-filled entrepreneurs that love God and want to hear his voice for their business. I do a weekly, a two weekly broadcast, um, a God Still Heals, which is a Bible study. You can find out more by um, on Instagram, clicking the link in my bio on either one of those. And then um, also do a, a, a podcast for business leaders and well, two podcasts, but business leaders and then for um, health and healing as well so either one start an instagram you can find the rest of the stuff <laughs> the, rest of the stuff there because i don't like giving people too much right. and things but um i appreciate y'all and um definitely encourage you guys to hear the voice of god for yourself and for your own healing yeah. absolutely and dr andrea i want to thank you also for the work that you're doing in the kingdom it is absolutely necessary um entrepreneurship and just needing a safe place right for right. christian creatives and entrepreneurs and all of that stuff and the message that god still heals never gets old right no. that's something that needs to be said over and over and forever and ever. So thank you for being on the show tonight. Thank you for the work that you're doing. Ladies, I want to ask both of you to come back on the show. Uh, we'll work all out. The sure, that would be have fun. Back. And I'm going to ask you all to hang back just for a second after the show. Um, but I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Churchy Chats with the Church Girl tonight. 
listen, y'all, next month, it's, uh, well, next week is uh, a new month, and it will be the sixth month of Churchy Chess with the Church Girl. And I guess time really does fly when you're having fun, but I just want to thank you for your support. And I am super excited about what God is going to do in this sixth month. Just hang with me and we're going to keep going and growing and glowing. Thank you so much for tuning in to Churchy Chess with the Church Girl tonight. I'll see you next week. Same place, same time. Good night.